Hello, everyone, and welcome to another debrief episode of Channel 781 News. Uh, this week, we'll be talking about the rich history Waltham has of defacing the Columbus statue on the Waltham Common. We're going to talk a little bit more about the uh, two resolutions that George put in uh, on pedestrianizing Waltham, and we'll talk a little bit more about the um, Waltham Field Station development um, and with a communication from the executive director of Waltham Fields Community Farm. Um, and uh, this week I am joined by uh, the ever fabulous uh, James Kellys. Hello, everyone. And Emily Spirit. Hello. Um, so this week, the Waltham Common Columbus statue was defaced with spray paint that read genocide, uh, genocider and death to America, which is like, I woke up and I thought that news was crazy. Um, Waltham Channel uh, correctly states that it's been defaced five other times in recent memory. Um, the story we're gonna tell is that first time uh, in recent memory, um, back in like 2015 or 16, uh, whatever uh, year it was, um, and that was with the, with the uh, red paint. A year before that, I, with the help of a couple other people, um, started a campaign. We were trying to honor Indigenous Peoples Day instead of Columbus Day, something that many, many, many other states did, many, many other cities. I've forgotten the talking points uh, after all these years. but um, And we also wanted to remove the Columbus statue, uh, which we thought, thought was just egregious and insane that Walt Disney Massachusetts is doing that. So we, uh, there's many different ways of uh, accomplishing community organizing. We decided to, in instead of going through the city council, to go through the mayor, just go directly to the mayor because other cities have done that Somerville did that. Um, the, the mayor just has the authority to just decide these things. It doesn't have to go through a long process. The mayor can just decide to do these things, um, at least for changing the holiday. The statue, that's neither here nor there, whether she can just decide to do it or not. Probably. Uh, but she probably likes to say that she cannot. Um, anyway, ultimately, all of our efforts failed. Um, it was a complete uh, failure. Um, and and I was just, you know, surprised because I was more less disillusioned um, to the mayor's matter of decision making. Um, I really thought she was going to uh, see eye to eye on us, um, and she just all that she talked about was the strong Italian heritage of Waltham and the strong foothold that. Italian Walthamites had in the municipality and how it would be insulting to them. Um, pretty much everything you thought people uh, would say, but really I thought the mayor of Waltham would say differently. Um, ultimately, nothing happened. Um, so a year later, um, the statue is covered in red paint and uh, Waltham Channel posted it um, and stuff like that. Um, so I'm working at the 99 in Waltham on south street at this time and uh and a week after or something like that i don't know a few days um after the statue got to face before it even became public knowledge before anyone knew anything two police officers came into my work and um uh, wanted to ask me a few questions now me having no idea what they want to talk about i'm like okay what can i help you with and I'm going to tell this whole story, and be true. It does, it does not paint me in a great light. Uh, it makes me look silly. Uh, but they want. They were like, "Oh, I'm going to show you some pictures." And I'm like, "Okay." First picture uh, is a public Facebook post I made, um, probably a couple of years before that, uh, with me flipping off the statue and saying like "fuck Columbus Day" or whatever. Um, and I remember them showing me that, and I was so confused as to why they were showing me that. I said verbatim. I still remember that they said freedom of speech like I have no idea why they were tearing me off the statue it made no sense to me I was so confused I said freedom of speech and they're like okay we're gonna show you another picture and they show me a picture of that statue drenched in red paint and I said because honestly I didn't I said I have no idea what you're talking about I have no idea what I'm looking at right now and they're like oh this is the same statue and I'm like okay like what do you want me to do about this and they're like we want you to come into the station we want you to ask a few questions so i went about my day uh a little anxious now because i had no idea what to do um i called a friend who put me in touch with a lawyer and the lawyer uh said 
don't do that. Why would you ever go to the station? Why would you ever self-incriminate yourself? Or, you know, there's a chance that you might self-incriminate. Um, so I wouldn't do that. So under the advice of my uh, lawyer, I did not do that. I called him and say, I'm, I'm not going to come in to talk to you um, for this reason. Uh, thank you very much. Goodbye. Uh, and so they um, came into my work again. They called my mother. Uh, they called my uh, girlfriend's place of work, trying to get me to come into the station. Um, ultimately, I never did. Um, and every year since, apparently, or nearly, uh, I think last year actually wasn't defaced. Um, but pretty much everyone, every other one, Waltham, Waltham's Columbus statue is defaced. Um, and so that's a short anecdote about that statue. And again, this year is no different. This year, again, the face, I don't understand what the plan is with the statue. Are they going to put up cameras? Um, but it seems just another episode of defacing the Waltham Columbus statue. Any comment on my nice anecdote about my life? It's a little alarming that social media posts can get like state security forces showing up to your house to intimidate you. I know. Yeah. My place of work. Oh yeah. Um, and they haven't called me in years, so I'm glad they don't think I did all the other ones, or this most recent one, which I was worried about. Every year it happens. I worry, like, do I have an alibi? Do you know? Can I prove that I was somewhere? I would say at at some point, um, you know, I think when something happens over and over again. Um, <sighs> And people would disagree, um, you know, I, I was gonna say, if this is a victimless crime, I know people are going to disagree with that. So I'll hesitate Sally to Kalora put it that way. It hate crime. Right, it's not, it's a hate crime in- Because she hated it. <laughs> exactly, in the office sense, it's a hate crime because she hated it. Um, she hated it. Um, however, I think there clearly, uh, in the WCVB segment, um, there was a young man who did come up even on camera and basically said, you know, Columbus was a colonizer and a terrible person. Um, we don't want this statue up. Um, and I think that at this point, it is not, um, you know, a one-time occurrence, and the city just needs to recognize that we need to just really wrestle with whether this statue needs to be in our city or not, whether people want it to be in the city or not. And clearly, there's a large enough contingent of people who absolutely do not want it in this city. Um, and I think to date, we've really people who are pro Columbus or pro statue have had the upper hand in this conversation. And I think it's just time to move beyond that um, piece of the story. Yeah, I mean, this was donated in 1992. It hasn't been around forever. It's not a part of Waltham's history. It, it's got the wrong spelling of the name. It's just a statue that some dudes wanted in the common, and somehow the Waltham Common became the house, the home of a, of a statue that has nothing to do with Waltham. And I think it speaks to the larger concept of what becomes so-called by right um, in our municipality or any other municipality, but in, in terms of Waltham, things, you can do things by right or things can be built by right if you've been there long enough. Well, who was here before we were? Indigenous people were. Um, so by right, that statue should not be here. Um, but, you know, people will claim that statue should be here by right because it's been there since 1990 something. Um, I just think we really need to examine this issue of doing things by right. It's a mentality that's become very problematic for a whole host of reasons. 
And uh, to note, uh, Newton just celebrated their first Indigenous Peoples Day uh, after changing the holiday a couple of years ago. Um, but since the pandemic, this coming year, uh, this past year, um, was the first time they celebrated it. And it looked like a great event. And uh, the municipality figured it out. It was a little contentious. I went to a couple of the meetings, um, but uh, they figured out how to do it. It's also like interesting because it is, like you pointed out, a relatively recent statue. And it also has like a typo in it, too. So it's not like this is some sort of treasured monument or anything like that. And also, like, it's not as if, like, it, it, it very much feels like someone was trying to grab at, like, a person to, as an example, but like an Italian that, because, like, it wasn't like Italy existed when Columbus was around <laughs> either. And like it's like they were trying to look for an italian but from before mussolini or something yeah and as, as, a, as a, a historical example of a of a, of a, of a trailblazer or something plenty of cool italians in history columbus yeah. i don't understand why is revered anyway we're getting too nuanced here um moving on uh Shortly, just talking about George's uh, two resolutions, um, he has successfully submitted on time and introduced the resolution on bike lanes. Uh, this is a great uh, first step uh, into doing it. Again, this is just looking for money to be allocated for a feasibility study to look at his plan uh, by professionals. Um, but it is going to uh, public works. Um, that will be an interesting committee. Uh, we will be there. Uh, recording if local access is not. Um, but if you care about bike lanes, that is a good time to uh, go to the meeting uh, to show your support um, and also email your city councilors to say that you support this. Um, Critical Mass will be putting up a uh, post about it as well. Um, you can like us on Facebook and Instagram and Twitter. Um, and also his second uh, resolution, uh, which I had no idea he was doing, um, is looking at creating an ad hoc committee on bicycle safety and pedestrianizing Waltham, uh, which is awesome. He, you know, it's just in resolution form right now. It's not, uh, you know, set in stone, but it's looking at uh, having a committee to do annual reports on bike safety um, and looking at the special permit hearings uh, and figuring out, you know, what impact it has on uh, bicycles as well and figuring out where the city needs attention in this um, and also what really excites me is that uh, the folks on the committee uh, while it is I wrote this down uh, while it's the head of the traffic commission head of the planning department Captain Cagle it is also four Waltham residents appointed by the city council for three-year terms um, so I you know I'm very excited about Waltham residents being on there um, and I definitely have uh, my own opinion on some of those spaces. I'm so very excited about that. That's going to be Committee of the Whole uh, uh, next week at 8 p.m. Um, that's going to be uh, live streamed if you would like to do that. But also I encourage you to come to the City Council meeting to show your support and email as well, because uh, this this is this is the during committee. These are the times where these things can be voted on. Um, they can be filed. Uh, they do have to eventually go back to the full City Council for second vote um whatever his decision is made but this is the this is go time for any uh resolution or a piece of legislation and finally um just a little note about the farm we talked about this the last time uh the waltham field station was the care and custody and control of the waltham field station was transferred to the um consolidated public works department um and you know we talked about how there was only one counselor, George Darcy, that said maybe, you know, this, maybe this isn't a great idea. Maybe we should be doing, maybe we should be creating an agricultural uh, commission. Maybe we should be putting it to the conservation commi uh, committee. Uh, but he did not want to uh, put it to the DPW and he voted no. Every other counselor voted for it and said, you know, this has gone on long enough. We want to we support the farm and we want to see the farm happen and we want to see these leases get signed. Um, and so they see it as a very obstructionist way. Um, but uh, just recently, the Waltham Field Community Farm put out a statement to their email list um, and then Waltham Channel picked it up as well, our local uh, news source. Um, and she said, I quote, 
she said, quote, um, we were disturbed by comments made during the 9-19-22 uh, meeting. They were counterproductive and demeaned uh, Waltham Fields Community Farms accountability, specifically to the legal agreements which were refined annually with UMass. And so this is a good example of how well, uh, politics can be very dirty. It can be a very you know nuanced conversation because you have politicians that say, I support X because I did Y supporting X. They can say, I did not want to slow down the process uh, for this farm, so I transferred it to the Consolidated Public Works, which is what the mayor's recommendation is. While you know, they can knock on your door and say that, and you think, wow, they support the farm, I'm gonna vote for them. They didn't obstruct the, that in any way. But you have to realize the nuances of the conversation. You have to realize, did, the Waltham Fields, Waltham Field Station tenants give a statement at this meeting? Did they, you know, give written input over what they would like to see happen? Or, you know, did we just listen to what the mayor wanted? You know, the mayor's idea of what this Waltham Field Station should be. She's already got plans. She's got ideas. She's got projects that she's putting in. And we've heard nothing on the city council floor about from the tenants from Waltham Fields Community Farm, from the Waltham Land Trust. So we have really have no idea what they want from these conversations. And so that is the nuance of the conversation that needs to be taken into account when someone says, I support X because I did Y. And so I'm very interested to see what happens moving forward with the Waltham Field Station. I would just but, encourage you know people to go out and enjoy Farm Day this Saturday if if you haven't been to the farm in a while or if you haven't been before, it's a good opportunity to see um, what Waltham Fields Community Farm has been doing for the last almost 30 years on that property um, and whether you might want to um, learn more about it and um, add to that conversation. I did want to touch uh, quickly on something that happened uh, last week in committees. We um, we did not have a debrief for this, um, but uh, we talked about a resolution Paul Cates, the Ward 7 City Councilor, uh, put in seeking to uh, put back in an accessible mailbox at the uh, post office. There were a lot of residents that reached out to their counselors saying this was an issue that was important to them. And Paul Cates put in a resolution uh, looking to invite the postmaster general into uh the waltham city council to account for why it was taken away and there was emailing they gave a response that said they were not planning on doing anything and so he decided to make this resolution um we talked a little bit about you know how it could have been stronger what he could have done differently but ultimately he said it was a good idea um just recently at the last committee um the last economic and community development uh committee which is where the resolution light laid um it was announced that the mailbox was put back in and they were withdrawing without prejudice uh the resolution and so it cannot be talked about anymore and so i mean it's a huge win for paul cates and a huge win for the disability activists of the city um and it's an example of if you you know if you make noise about something as a counselor sometimes it goes your way and uh we've seen it ha not happen um Kathy Ann Harris's uh, resolution on national grid uh and the rolling blackouts comes to mind where that necessarily did not uh pan out the way that she thought that, like it would happen with this one um so it's not always the case that it, that it works out but this one it's a slam dunk slam dunk for Paul slam dunk for the post office slam dunk for the people that wanted that mailbox so good job Paul and I think that will cover it for the debrief everyone um please come to the uh board meetings um, next week, wards three and four, uh, Wednesday and Thursday, or Thursday and Friday. <laughs> um, uh, they're very interesting meetings. Um, it's a good you know, just place to hang out with uh, like-minded folks. We'll be there uh, recording as well as um, hopefully having a few people speak. Um, and we will see you next week uh, for the committee debriefs, which should be interesting. Thank you. Take care. Bye, everyone.